Welcome to GraviCalc, the world of marble computers built using Gravitrax Marble Ones. I'm Chris, and this is Poindexter, the world's largest marble computer. In the previous video, I showed you how I built this marble computer that fills an entire room. In this video, I'll show you how it works. We'll answer the question, how can Poindexter add to over 1 million despite having only 180 marbles? How can marbles even perform arithmetic? How do they do that? How do you do that? Are you a smart little marble? Yes, you are. Get you, get you, go. I think he smiled at me. You know, I think Chris has lost his marbles. I bet Poindexter isn't even a computer at all. He just built a marble run that spits out a predetermined answer. Yeah, look at my nifty marble run here. I call it computer. Computer, what's zero plus one? The answer is one. Well, what do you know? It really does work. Okay, Jeb has a point. How do we know that Poindexter, the marble computer, really can add together any two numbers? Well, any two numbers in its range. To answer that question, we're going to do four things in this video. First, we'll randomly select numbers to add together on the marble computer. These numbers were submitted by the International Gravitrax community in Switzerland, the Netherlands, Canada, the United States, Spain, Germany, the UK, and even one from Slovakia that has a special love story behind it. Watch to the end to hear that story. Randomly adding these numbers together should prove to Jeff that Poindexter has been programmed with a working algorithm, not a predetermined answer. Maybe I could sell this at the Cracker Barrel. Everyone's tired of that triangle peg game anyway. Always calling me an ignoramus. Second, we'll explore how binary numbers work and why computers like Poindexter use them. This will help us understand the conceptual level of how Poindexter adds numbers together. The math behind the machine. And it even fits in a shirt pocket. Of course, you'll need a pocket protector. Third, we'll take a close-up look at Poindexter's inner workings. This is the physical level of how the computer's marbles, switches, curves, and action tiles implement the conceptual level math. And we'll see some nice slow-mo shots of the computer in action. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! 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 Ooh, it scratches my back too. The back scratching computer. Mildred, Mildred, we're gonna be rich. And fourth, I'll give you free instructions to build your own marble computer out of Gravitrax. Just maybe a little smaller. Let's get started. That's it? He's a liar. He promised to show us the vortex of doom. Oh, that's right. And I'll show you the vortex, the vortex of, of doom. doom. Igor, hurry, come watch. He's going to show us the Vortex of Doom. Take notes, maybe we can use that when we take over the world. <laughs> this is great. And don't forget the popcorn. Okay, let's add some numbers together on Poindexter, the marble computer that consumes no electricity. It actually takes over three minutes for Poindexter to finish a full calculation. And we have seven pairs of numbers to add, so to save time, we're going to run these calculations in the background while we learn how the marble computer works. If you want to see a full three minute calculation in all its widescreen awesomeness, you'll find that in the previous video. Now it's time to select the first numbers to add. Now let's look at how we load those numbers into the marble computer. Poindexter is a binary computer, so our first step is to convert the numbers into binary format. If you're a little fuzzy on how binary numbers work, don't worry. For now, I've loaded marbles into the computer according to this prep sheet. While the calculation runs, I'll give you the world's easiest lesson in binary numbers, and then we'll come back and look at how to convert numbers for the prep sheets. Oh, there's Big Brother again. You know, he thinks I'm a conspiracy theorist, and that's a conspiracy in itself. Hmm, so if a fact checker believes a conspiracy, what happens if it fact checks itself? Ooh, maybe it would explode. Dusty scoot. 
Igor, fire up the computer and log into Facebook. It's time to take over the world. <laughs> I recently introduced binary numbers to kids, ages 10 to 16, in a program I called Gravitrax Kids Club. They had no problem understanding how binary numbers work, and neither will you. In fact, why don't we join them for a lesson? And while we do, we're going to start our first marble run with numbers from Gravibon and Chloe. Ready, set, go! Our first numbers to add are 147,369, submitted by Gravibon in Germany, added with 5411 from Chloe in the United States. These are the numbers we load into Poindexter. I'll explain later in more detail how that's done, but for now, here's what you need to know. One number will be loaded using red marbles, and the second number using blue marbles. Our prep sheet shows two rows with the binary marble sequences for the two input numbers, and these rows have been highlighted either red or blue so we can track which marbles go with which number. We place a marble in Poindexter for every one and leave an empty spot with no marble for every zero. The row below that is the sum we expect Poindexter to produce if its calculation is correct. At the beginning of each run, the video will verify that the marbles are already loaded according to the prep sheet, and the outputs will be either visible while the calculation is running or reviewed at the end of each run. To save time, each run will be played at double speed. You can always slow the video down to see any of the runs at regular speed. Hi kids! Welcome to a special edition of Gravitrax Kids Club. Today we're going to pull together pieces of lessons from weeks 6 through 11. We're going to bundle these lessons together into one super Gravicalc lesson where we learned all about binary numbers. Now don't panic. Here's the cool thing. Even if you know nothing about binary numbers, you already know almost everything about them. Trust me, you do. Prepare to learn what you already know. Yep, I already know all about them. He's talking about crop circles, right? Because I know all about them crop circles. Just saying. First, let's review what digits are. Here's a three digit number. It's one number, but has three digits. Here's a digit, here's a digit, and here's a digit. The digits are the individual symbols that make up the entire number. Now, binary numbers are numbers with only zeros and ones in them, like this number here. They're important because almost all computers use them. You see, just like the bi in biplane means two wings, and the bi in bicycle means two wheels, binary numbers use digits with only two values, zero and one. Get it? Binary numbers, two values, zero and one. Get it? Like bicycle, two tires, binary, two values. Get it? It's just like our mascot, Robico, the rolling bit computer, likes to say. Binary means options are two, so zero and one will have to do. Let's repeat that. Binary means options are two, so zero and one will have to do. Let's see. A bicycle is a two-wheeled cycle, so a binary must be a two-wheeled nary. What's a nary? When I get down, marbles all on the ground. I'ma keep looking up why Gravitrax guy got his eye on the sky. Nary. nary. I got nary, I care. Wherever I go, Jesus is there. I said nary. nary. I got nary, I care. He's coming from heaven to take me there. There's nary a time I haven't known. There's nary a time I walked alone. Grab a track sky out. Keep looking up, y'all. The second pair of numbers we'll add are 362,920 from Nugget in Canada and 242,424 from Epic Gravitrax in Spain. Nugget says Gravitrax is so great because even though it seems so simple, you can do so much with it. And unlike most other kinds of marble track, you can be super creative because of the unique shapes and use of the pieces. And Epic Gravitrax says his favorite Gravitrax part is the hammer. Now at first glance, binary numbers look confusing, right? What do all those zeros and ones mean? How do we even read them?
Binary numbers work the same way as the numbers we use every day. Now sing it with me. Binary numbers work the same way as the numbers we use every day. So let's take a closer look at everyday numbers and the rules they follow, and then apply those rules to binary numbers. Now here's two numbers that have the same three digits, two, five, and seven. But are they the same number? Do they have the same value? Let's see. The answer to that question is 42. No, wait, that's not it. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Yep. Sorry, Jeb, we weren't asking for the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And yes, Jesus is the answer to those questions. He is the Word of God that created it all. And since he is the author of every moment of our lives, we should include him in those moments. Even when playing with rabbit tracks? That's right. But the question to answer right now is this. Do these two numbers have the same value? No, they don't. But why not? It's because their digits are in a different order. So a digit's order, its place in line, tells us its value. And that's what we call place value. Place value gives us the value of each digit for everyday numbers and for binary numbers. We are all familiar with how place values work in everyday numbers, right? Because God gave us 10 fingers, the numbers we use every day are from the base 10 number system. This means our numbers are based on multiples of 10. Get it? It's based on 10, base 10 numbers. Get it? It's so basic, man. But we're just covering the bases while playing the bass. Let me turn up my amp. One, two, three. Rabbit tracks is kinda cool. You can play it after school, but only after finishing your homework. Do you have 10 fingers? Some people have more. The Bible mentions a giant of a man who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. Rabbit tracks is kind of fun, you can play it in the sun, but then it will turn kind of yellow. Even today, some people have extra fingers and toes. That is so cool! Yeah, and I think the giant was a chicken farmer, and that's why they sell eggs by the dozen, because he could count to 12 on his fingers. Eight, nine, 12. Hey, I got 12 fingers too. Mildred said I had 10. Guess I won that bet. The third pair of numbers we'll be adding is 2048 from Langston Reese in the USA, added to 123456 from Tycho in the Netherlands. This is interesting because Langston chose a number that requires only one marble to represent because 2048 is one of the place values in the binary number system. So to convert 2048 to a base 2 number, we place a 1 in the 2048's place value and we're done. It's just one marble. Tycho's number is also interesting because even though it shows a clear pattern in our everyday base 10 numbers of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it has no such pattern as a binary number. The number 257 has digits in three place values, a 7 in the 1's place, a 5 in the 10's place, and a 2 in the 100's place. So we read the number 257 as 2 hundreds plus 5 tens or 50 plus 7 ones, which totals 257. Do you notice a pattern in the place values? That's right, each one is 10 times the previous place value. They are multiples of 10. The first place value is the ones place. The next place value is one times 10 or the tens place. The next place value is 10 times 10 or the hundreds place. The next place value is 100 times 10 or the thousands place. The next place value is the happy place. Just kidding, there is no happy place in math. Excuse me, I think you mean maths. Maths? No, dude, that's just wrong. It's math, not maths. Silly American. He probably counts distance with his feet. But you know, base 10 numbers are not the only way to write numbers. We can have number systems based on multiples of 12, or 5, or 22, or 16, 
or 256 duo centahexaquinquagesimal, or any multiple we want. In fact, you probably didn't realize that you already use another number system. The sexagesimal system is based on multiples of 60 and is the number system we use to keep track of hours, minutes, and seconds, with 60 seconds in one minute and 60 minutes in one hour. But the simplest number system of them all is the binary number system. Binary numbers follow the same rules as base 10 with one difference. They have place values that are multiples of 2, not multiples of 10. Just like with base 10 numbers, the first place value is the 1's place. But the next place value is 1 times 2, not 1 times 10. So it's the 2's place. The next place value is 2 times 2, or the 4's place. The next place value is 4 times 2, or the 8's place. Each place value is 2 times the previous place value, not 10 times the previous place value. You see, the binary number system was invented by horses. They don't have 10 fingers for counting, just 2 hooves, so they can only count to 2. Okay, that was a joke. I'll stop horsing around. Because the binary number system is based on multiples of 2, it is also called the base 2 number system. Get it? Base 2 numbers, they're based on multiples of 2. Get it? The fourth pair of numbers we'll be adding is 181,169 from Dejo Kaiser in Germany, added with 4,744 from Samra in the USA. Dejo says, I love Gravitrax because it is so cool. It looks like we'll only have three marbles carry over during this calculation. Okay, let's look closer at this binary number. This number is actually the number 6. It may look like the number 110, but it's 6 because we're using base 2 place values. So we read this number as 1, 4 plus 1, 2 plus 0, 1s, which equals 6. You see, you have to know the values of the place values to read the binary number. The values of the place values, that's like the value squared. So you need to know the base system a number is written in in order to read it? That's right, Edward. Look at these two numbers. One is a base 10 number and the other is a base 2 number. They look the same, but examine their place values. The base 10 number on the left has 1 10 and 1 1, which add up to 11. But the base 2 number on the right has 1 2 and 1 1, which add up to 3. Now let's look at the values of digits in both the base 10 and base 2 number systems. In our everyday base 10 numbers, digits can be 10 different values. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. That's 10 values, including the 0. The largest value we can put in the 1's place is 9. But to write the number 10, we need two digits. We carry a 1 into the 10's place and reset the 1's place to 0 leaving us with 110 plus 0 ones, which equals 10. Now contrast that with base 2 numbers. Binary digits, also called bits, can only be 0 or 1. Remember, binary means options are 2, so 0 and 1 will have to do. So the largest value we can put in the 1's place is 1. To write the number 2, we need 2 binary digits, 2 bits. We carry a 1 to the 2's place, that's the first bit, and reset the 1's place to 0, that's the second bit. This is just like we do for base 10 numbers. And we read this number as 1, 2, plus 0, 1's, or simply 2. You see, you already knew how to do that. I did? Huh, I must be pretty smart. Me and my back-scratching computer. You didn't tell me you can't count the 2. Cracker Barrel ain't gonna like that. So that's how binary numbers work. Now we can go back and look at how we convert numbers for the prep sheets so we know how to load marbles into Poindexter for adding. Our first step is to take the numbers we're adding together and convert them into binary format. 
And our second step will come when we take Poindexter's binary answer and convert it back into a base 10 number in order to read it. The fifth pair of numbers we'll be adding is 5096 from Gravitrax Constructor in the UK with 400,356 from Gravitrax Studio in Switzerland. William says, I like Gravitrax because there is so much to explore with it. This run has the most action in the middle bits. Let's say I got an everyday number like 13. How do I convert that into a binary number to put into my computer? Well, Jeb, the basic idea is to split that number 13 into base two place values. To do that, we repeat a three-step procedure. In the first step, we find the largest base two place value that fits inside 13. Is that eight, four, two, or one? It's eight. Since we selected the eights place, we take eight out of the 13 and move it into the binary number we're building. We do this by the second step of writing a one in the eights place, and then the third step of subtracting that eight from the 13 to find what remains, and this leaves us with five. Then we simply repeat those three steps with the five. First step, what's the largest place value that fits inside five? Is it four, two, or one? It's four. So we take four out of the remaining five by the second step of writing a one in the fours place, and the third step subtracting that four from the five. And this leaves one. Now we do the same thing with the one. What is the largest place value that fits inside our remaining one? Is it the two? No. So we write a zero in the twos place. Is it the one? Yes. So we write a one in the ones place, and subtract that one from our remaining total of one, leaving zero. Once we get to zero, we stop because now the entire 13 has been moved over into the binary number. The 13 has been split into an 8, a 4, and a 1, which are all base 2 place values. The binary number 1101 is the number 13. So that's how to convert an everyday number into a binary number so that we can load it into Poindexter or a back scratching computer. Lastly, let's see how to convert the answer we get from Poindexter back into an everyday base 10 number in order to read it. Oh goody! I bet this will be difficult, just like that time I solved Einstein's field equations to make time go backwards for that Superman movie. Igor, come take notes! Now tell us how to read binary numbers. <laughs> Actually, reading binary numbers is super easy. We simply add up all the binary place values that have a 1 in them. Let's stick with the binary number 13 and add it together from left to right. First of all, we have a 1 in the 8's place, so we add 8 to our total. There's a 1 in the 4's place, so we add a 4. There's a 0 in the 2's place, so we don't add a 2. And there's a 1 in the 1's place, so we add a 1. What's the total? 13. So the only thing we need to know to read binary numbers is the value of each place value. We just add up the place values that are 1. Simple, right? That's it? You mean anyone can read binary numbers with simple addition? Igor, quick, pull up our top secret plans to take over the worlds that we encoded in binary numbers and translate them into uh, King James English. Yes. Make them sound like that King James Version Bible. Then no one will understand them. <laughs> so that's it. Now you know all about binary numbers. It's time to graduate. By the power vested in me by King James, I hereby conferest upon thine personhood a gravicalc degree in ye old and binary numerals. May thou henceforth and hereafter utilizest this information as thou cipherest from those numerals of the base of ten into those of the base of duality, which whereafter thou shalt deposit in the old and point extra numeral engine a several quantity of iron spheres of carbon reinforcement and chromium facade of divers chromacity is thine inputs to the calculation. Wherefore upon pressing the button of commencement, and waitest thou a space of time of one twentieth of an hour, thine rejoinder shall be deposited thereon upon thine tiles of exit, whereupon thou shalt addest thy numerals in which thou findest thy aforementioned spheres, and be thereupon informed of the prize of thy knowledge, the fruit of thy labors which couldldst have been much more easily obtained utilizing a calculate engine procured at thy local dollar store. The sum of thine inputs. Boy howdy, that fella sure does speak good Spanish. I never learned Spanish. Or how to add. If you'd like to build a Gravitrax track to help you get even more familiar with binary numbers, enter this code into the free Gravitrax app for step-by-step -step build instructions for a 4-bit binary counter. And when built, it looks like this. 
With a 3D printer, you can print out the little gravel label clips to label the switches with 0 and 1, and the base tile inserts to label the binary place values. You can find the links for these 3D files in the description below. The track requires two starter sets to build, and as you run marbles through it, the switches count from 0 to 15 in binary numbers. A switch to the left represents a 0, and a switch to the right represents a 1. It's a great hands-on learning activity for the kids to experience for themselves the multiples of two patterns hidden within binary numbers. I'll also include a link to this chart for the kids to fill out as they run the binary counter. The sixth pair of numbers we'll be adding is a special request from Tycho in the Netherlands to add 111 plus 111. When we convert the number 111 to a base 2 number, it is 1101111. So when we add these numbers together, we'll see action in the adding circuits up through the 128th place. And after that, the adding circuits will be silent, with only the timing circuits running to the end. Hey, what did the binary number say to the pig? You can count on me. Get it? Binary number, you can count on me. Yeah, the pig really had nothing to do with that joke. Let's take one last look at one of these prep sheets that we've been using to load the numbers into Poindexter. At the top, we have our binary place values from the ones place all the way up to the 19th bit, which is the 262, 144th place, and that final 20th carry bit. I've used these 3D printed inserts to keep track of which place value is which on Poindexter. These inserts just go into a base tile. So the job of the prep sheet was to take these base 10 numbers, which we're adding together, and there's the sum, and convert these into their binary equivalent. So for example, the top number 147369, we need to convert it into this binary number using that procedure I showed you earlier, where we simply subtract the largest binary place value repeatedly until we get down to zero. And we put a one in each of those place values that we subtracted. Similarly with the 5411. We subtract a 4096, a 1024, 256, etc. And then put ones in each of those place values. And that's our binary number 5411. Then for the sum, we have that below, and we can check that with Poindexter simply by adding up all of the place values that have a 1. Here's the scratch sheet for that until we get that 152,780. So that's all there is to the prep sheet. It's just an aid to help us load the marbles into Poindexter. So why do computers use binary numbers? I mean, besides the obvious reason of hatching sinister plots to take over the world, that apparently anyone can read. Well, it turns out it's not easy to get a computer to work reliably using digits that can be 10 different values, like in the base 10 number system. Suppose you're representing digits in a computer using electrical voltages and represent a value of zero using zero volts and a value of nine using five volts. What voltage would you use to represent the number five? Maybe 2.8 volts? And what voltage would represent a 6? Maybe 3.3 volts? Why, a small variation in voltage could accidentally turn a 5 into a 6, and that would give us a computer that's just as unreliable as trying to build functional living organisms through random mutations. You wouldn't want to stake your life on that kind of reliability. Well, I always get confused anyway between 5 and 6, I tell you. I let go of my coffee cup to use my second hand to count, and then it's coffee all over the floor. It makes me lose my place. Then it takes me two minutes just to count the first hand all over again. That's really frustrating. It's so much easier for a machine to measure the difference in signals that can only be two values. If the digits are either zero or one, then it's black and white. No confusion. For example, in a computing machine, you can represent zero and one with a low voltage and a high voltage, or using positive and negative electric charges, or with directional magnetic fields that point one way or the other, or using light and dark spots on an optical disk. There are lots of ways you can represent zero and one in a way that a computer can easily read, write, store, and manipulate. 
So that's one reason why computers use the binary number system. Now it takes more place values to represent a particular number in the base 2 number system than the base 10 number system, but that's not a problem due to the miniaturization of computer chips. In fact, many computer chips today are 64-bit processors. They work with numbers that have 64 place values, which can store a value of over 9 quintillion. I edited this video on a Mac Mini, which contains the Apple M1 processor, a microchip that contains 16 billion transistors. Yes, you heard me. 16 billion! Power! Power to take over the world! <laughs> well, actually, Edward, the M1 Max chip has 57 billion transistors, almost four times more. And there are flash memory chips with over 2 trillion transistors on them. Now, if I could only miniaturize my marble computer so that it didn't take up the entire room. Right here, buddy, fits in your pocket. And it's on clearance. Two for the price of three. How many you want? I got plenty. Yeah, Cracker Barrel, turn me down. Just like these computers, Poindexter uses the binary number system because it's easy to represent a one with a marble and a zero with the absence of a marble. Hey, what did the marble say to the frog? The frog. Hey, what did the marble say to the frog? I'm number one. You're number two. Get it? Like the marble's a one. So it says, I'm number one. Like if it were no marble, it would be zero. But because it's a marble, it's a one. Yeah, I threw you off with that frog part, didn't I? The seventh pair of numbers we're going to add are a couple of latecomers, so they were not included in the drawing. We have 524,286 from that guy in the USA. You'll notice that that guy chose a number that is only one less than the maximum that this marble computer can add. To that, we're going to add 120,492 from Eric Pavluzic in Slovakia. Eric chose a number that has special significance for his wife. And now, a love story. Once upon a time, over five years ago, Eric and Anita met each other. They discovered they shared a passion for art and a love of dogs. Eric and Anita were married in 2021. Eric is grateful that Anita understands his passion for Gravitrax and that she has the patience to allow him to use one part of their living room for his Gravitrax creations. So Eric has submitted the number 12 Four ninety-two, the day the love of his life was born. Aww. Anita, this marble runs for you. So how can we design a marble computer that adds binary numbers together? To figure that out, let's examine the process of binary addition and see how we can marbleize it with Gravitrax. And yes, you guessed it, binary addition works a lot like base 10 addition. Let's take a look. Let's think about the process we use to add everyday base 10 numbers. For example, what if we add 34 plus 67? Normally, we would split this up by place values, adding the digits one place value at a time. When we add, we start by adding the ones place, then we add the tens place. In the ones place, we add four plus seven, which is 11. Can we fit 11 in the ones place sum? No, 11 is a two digit sum, so we leave one in the sum and carry one to the tens place. Then we add the tens place, one plus three plus six. What does that equal? 10. Again, we have a two digit sum, so we put zero in the tens place and carry one to the hundreds place, giving us our answer. We all know how to do addition like this, right? I never learned how to add, but now that I got my back scratching computer, Maybe I don't need to. Now we use that same process to add binary numbers. Let's work this example to figure out what we need our marble computer to do. First we add the ones place, then the twos place. And that's really cool because it means we only need to design a small marble adding circuit that adds a single place value and then repeat that circuit for each place value we're adding. In other words, we can build a circuit to add the ones place bits and build another copy of the same circuit to add the twos place bits and build a third copy to add the fours place bits, and so on. That makes things way easier. It's a modular design strategy. 
So let's work through this example of adding 3 plus 3 in binary numbers, so we know what our marble adding circuit needs to do. In the ones place, we add 1 plus 1, which is 2, or 1, 0 in binary. That's a 2-bit sum, so we put the 0 in the ones place, that's called the sum bit. The sum bit is the output bit that stays in the current place value. And we carry the 1 to the 2's place. That's called the carry bit. The carry bit is the output bit that is sent or carried to the next place value to be added there. So that's all there is to it. We've added the 1's place. And we discovered that for the 1's place we have two input bits and two output bits. The two input bits are the 1's place bit for input A and the 1's place bit for input B. And we have two output bits which are the sum bit and the carry bit. So far we've discovered our marble adding circuit must be able to take two input bits and convert them into two output bits. And this can be accomplished using a circuit known as a half adder. So we'll mark the ones place in pink to show that it can use a half adder circuit. Now let's add the twos place. Uh oh, we are stuck. How many bits do we need to add in the twos place? We need to add the carry bit from the ones place plus the twos place bit for input A plus the twos place bit for input B. So that's three bits total. Our half adder circuit can't do that. It can only handle two input bits. We need an expanded adding circuit that can add three bits. The circuit we need is called a full adder. Full adders can add three bits. They can fully handle the addition of not only the two input bits, but also the carry bit from the previous place value. A half adder can't handle that carry bit. So while we can get by with a half adder in the ones place, all the other place values will need full adders because any of them might receive a carry bit from the previous place value. We'll color our full adders gold. Now, we know that our full adder will have three inputs. How many outputs will it have? Well, it looks like the maximum it could add would be one plus one plus one. What's that sum? It's three. And how do you write three in the binary number system? 1, 1. That's a 2-bit answer, again with a sum bit and a carry bit. So our full adder marble circuit must be able to take in 3 input bits and convert them into 2 output bits. So the sum bit for the 2's place is 1, and the carry bit that carries over to the 4's place is also 1. So we see that the answer to this addition problem of 3 plus 3 is 6. 1, 4, 1, 2, and 0, 1's. Now I know y'all turned down the back scratching computer the first time y'all saw it, but check this out. Full adder, half adder. I call it the back scratching computer that isn't long enough to scratch your back. Okay, still working on the name. What's interesting is that since both the half adder and full adder have two bit outputs, there are only four possible sums that either can produce. If the inputs all add up to zero, the output will be zero, so both the carry bit and the sum bit will be zero. That's zero, zero. If all the inputs add up to one, the output will be zero, one. The sum bit will be one, and since there's nothing to carry to the next place value, the carry bit will be zero. If all the inputs add up to two, the output will be one, zero, the binary number two. And lastly, if all the inputs add up to 3, the output will be 1, 1, the binary number 3. Now, you'll never get a 3 out of a half adder because it only adds 2 bits for a maximum sum of 2. Only a full adder will output a sum of 3. These adding circuits will always give us a 2-bit output that is between 0 and 3. So it should be pretty easy to design a marble circuit to do this. Easy. Why it took me years to develop the back scratching computer. It all started back in my youth when I used to walk a mile to school uphill both ways in the snow. Of course we had snow in Louisiana. And once we figured out that marble adding circuit, we should be able to build copies of it to add as many bits as we need. Here's an example of 39 plus 99, which is 138. The base 10 addition problem is on the right. And the same addition problem in base 2 numbers is on the left. 
You can see that this is a much larger problem that requires seven adding circuits to complete, one for each place value. And as I quickly step through this example, we see that every place value gives us a two-bit output that falls between zero and three. In the ones place, we add one plus one, which is two, or one zero in binary. So we leave zero in the sum and carry a one to the twos place. That gives us one plus one plus one in the twos place, which is three. We leave one in the sum bit and carry one to the fours place. One plus one again is two, so we leave zero and carry the one. Eights place, the sum is one, one plus zero plus zero. So we just leave a one in the sum, nothing to carry to the sixteens place. The sixteens place sum is zero, zero plus zero is zero. Thirty twos place, again one plus one, so zero and carry the one. And sixty fours place, one plus one again, so that is one zero. This was a 7-bit addition problem. Poindexter is a 19-bit computer, so it can add even larger binary numbers that have up to 19 place values. To keep the adding circuits consistent, all 19 adding circuits in Poindexter will be full adders. Even though the ones place only requires a half adder, we'll put a full adder there and just use two of its three inputs. Of course, the going was so difficult, I never actually made it to school. So that's the math behind the machine. Now comes the really interesting part. How do we transform this conceptual level binary math into a physical level marble computer? How do we design a full adder using marbles, switches, and track pieces? It's time to take a close-up tour of Poindexter's inner workings. We're going to cover Poindexter's three circuits in detail right now, the adding circuit, the carry bit transfer circuit, and the timer circuit. Now this is the real brains of the marble computer. This is Poindexter's full adder circuit. Poindexter contains 19 of these adder circuits. Each one adds the input bits for one place value, plus the carry bit from the previous place value. Actually, this circuit is amazingly compact, and that's because it uses a shortcut that we'll talk about in a minute. Normally, a full adder circuit requires five logic gates to build. This is the logic diagram of a full adder circuit and these are the five logic gates, which are the simplest possible logic circuits in a computer. When we build this circuit using Gravitrax, it looks like this. It's pretty big. This may not look much bigger than what you see in Poindexter, but remember, this is just the adder circuit and does not include a carry bit transfer circuit or a timer circuit. If we use this five gate layout for all 19 adder circuits, there's no way Poindexter would fit in my house. Igor, have we completed the shrink ray yet? We can use it on Gravitrax so Chris can fit everything in his house. But I bet Marble Mania 3D could just 3D print some small Gravitrax pieces, like a mini travel set. Good idea. Well, while Edward is working on his shrink ray, we're going to use the compact adding circuit instead. The adding circuit starts with a launch pad that can hold three marbles and launch them when pressed. Labeling the launch pad's three marble slots as A, B, and C, these slots become the computer's inputs. This is where we program the computer with the numbers we want to add. Slot A will hold a bit from the first number we're adding, input A. We'll use a red marble in this slot if that bit is 1, and leave the slot empty if the bit is 0. Slot B will hold a bit from the second number we're adding, input B. We'll use a blue marble for that input. Bet you can't, bet you can't, bet you can't guess what slot C is for. Cracker Barrel. I know. C is for Christmas. It's for the gold marble in the advent calendar set. I bet it's made of plutonium. Ooh, maybe if we buy 1,000 advent calendar sets, We'll have enough plutonium to take over the world. C stands for carry bit. Slot C always starts off empty, but it gets filled if the previous place value sends over a carry bit. So we call this input the carry in bit because that bit is being carried in from the previous place value. I'll show you how Poindexter handles carry bits in a minute because it's super cool. Your inner geek is going to geek out, trust me. Below the adder circuit are two landing pads. These are the two output bits, the carry bit and the sum bit. 
Remember, the sum bit is the output bit that stays in the current place value. And the carry bit is the output bit that gets carried out to the next place value. So for that reason, it's also called the carry out bit to distinguish it from the carry in bit, input C. After we run our adder circuit, a marble in the landing pad means its output bit is one, and an empty landing pad means its output bit is zero. Now let's walk through how the adding circuit works. When we press the launch pad, its marbles go through two switches. These switches are the shortcut I was mentioning earlier. They make this full adder much more compact and are where the addition magic takes place. It's really magical. Just like I'm gonna magically press the like button below this video. Kazam! Well, it didn't work. I guess you'll have to press the like button for me. So please, press the like button, please. Press the like button, please. Press the like button, like button, like button, please. Now the launch pad may have one marble in it, or two, or three, or it may have none. Regardless of how many marbles it has or which slot a marble starts in, all input marbles are sent through the first switch. The switch is kind of like a marble blender. It doesn't care what order the marbles go through or what color they are. All it cares about is the number of marbles going through it. The first switch's job is to count and separate the marbles. The switch separates the marbles by sending the first and third marble to the left and the second marble to the right. The second marble sweeps back around to the left to become the carry out bit that is sent to the next place value. Remember, once the sum gets to two or three, we carry a one over to the next place value. This is based on a concept originally developed in a video by Andreas Schleifenbaum. I improved on Andreas' original concept. On its way to becoming the carry bit, my circuit sends the second marble backwards through the second switch toggling the switch so that the much slower first marble does not end up in the sum bit landing pad. Remember, when we count to two in binary, we carry a one to the next place value and reset the sum bit to zero. The second marble beats the first marble to that second switch to ensure that happens. But if that first marble does not end up in the landing pad, where does it go? Enter the vortex. What is the vortex, you ask? I'm glad you asked. The Vortex is a cute, cozy, little circular room where marbles can go to disappear, disappear forever, forever into, a, into black a black hole, hole where the where cosmos, the cosmos forgets, forgets that they, they ever existed. existed. This, this is the is Vortex, the vortex of, of Doom! Well, okay, actually the Vortex of Doom is really just a catch basin for extra marbles that don't end up in the answer. We simply ignore marbles that end up in the Vortex of Doom. That's the Vortex of Doom? How am I supposed to take over the world with that? Well, maybe a small country like Luxembourg? Igor, should we take over Luxembourg or Andorra? Ooh, I know, I know, how about Liechtenstein? Tell you what, Igor, you choose. I don't really care which one. They all have nice castles. I need more room to set up my gravit tracks. So as long as it has a castle, I'm good. So the second switch determines if a marble ends up in the sum bit landing pad. If there is a third marble, it follows in the path of the first marble. When the first marble heads to the vortex of doom, it flips the second switch back to its original position so that the third marble ends up in the sum bit, giving us a total sum of three, the binary number one, one. But so you can fully visualize the adder circuit in action, let's run the circuit through all four possible scenarios. Let's do some marble racing. Greetings race fans, it's a balmy winter day here in Tucson, Arizona. In our first heat, 
we're adding 0 plus 0 plus 0. There's a signal, and they're off. The 0 with marble goes through the first switch. But wait, the 0 with marble is gaining. Going through the hairpin turn, it's a photo finish. And the output is nothing. Absolutely nothing. This always happens. No matter how many times I run this race, the sum is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on to our second heat. Our second heat sees the addition of a lone rookie. We're adding 1 plus 0 plus 0, and the rookie has his choice of gates. Looks like he's choosing gate B. And he lurches out of the gate. All by himself, he veers to the left and is clearly ahead of the rest of the pack. With the race in the back, he takes an early victory lap. Ending up in the winner's circle, the sum bit landing pad, in this uncontested race, giving us an output of 0, 1, the binary number 1. So 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. In our third heat, the rookie is joined by a challenger. We're adding 1 plus 1 plus 0. The marbles take position in the A and B gates, and they're off. Marble 1 takes the lead, reaching the first switch and taking the track to the left. It looks like he's heading for the winner's circle landing pad again. No, wait, what is that? It's like the flash. Incredibly, the challenger Marble 2 has snuck around to the right, and in a surprise move has beaten Marble 1 to the second switch. What a turn of events. And look what he's doing. He's toggling the switch. Oh my goodness. Marble 1 has been denied the landing pad. Marble 2 slammed the door in his face. What a disappointment. Not only that, but Marble 1 is now headed to the Vortex of Doom. What a shame. And off goes Marble 2 to win the carry bit pole position for our final heat. What a race. So we end up with an output of 1-0, which we are told is the number 2 in the binary number system. So 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2. It's our final heat, and the gates are packed, with the winner of yesterday's race joining us in the carry bit gate. We're adding 1 plus 1 plus 1. And there they go. Marble 1 is off to the left, but a little more cautious through those curves. Sure enough, Marble 2 makes his signature move to the right to outflank his opponent. But what's this? Here comes Marble 3 to the left behind Marble 1. What move does he have up his sleeve? Sure enough, Marble 2 is the first to the second switch and has secured the carry bit pole position for tomorrow's race in the next higher place value. And there goes Marble 1 again to the vortex of shame, resetting switch 2 to its original position. But now Marble 3 comes to clean up and look at that! Marble 3 exploits the double toggle of switch 2 and finds himself in the winner's circle, the sum bit landing pad. What an upset! Marble 2 won the carry bit position, but Marble 3 took the trophy in the sum bit. That's a 1-1, one, one, which if I remember correctly is the binary number 3. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So that's how the adding circuit magic works. But this is only one adding circuit that adds a single bit of the binary numbers we're adding. To add larger numbers, we need to build more copies of this adding circuit and hook them together. So let's do this. Let's add another adding circuit. We'll start by relabeling our first adder as the ones place. Then we'll relabel its carry bit as the twos place. Now we'll build a second adder circuit there. We'll need to add some more base plates, and even though we're not putting an adding circuit in the fours place just yet, we need a fours place landing pad in case the twos place adding circuit outputs a carry bit. We'll also add some dark height tiles just to draw a line between the place values. Now it's time to examine the carry bit circuit. I think this is a really fun part of Poindexter. How can we get that carry bit marble from the once place value loaded into the adding circuit of the next place value? Well, there's probably lots of ways to do this, but we're going to focus on two. The first method uses some of those normally useless extra launch pads from all of the Gravitrack starter sets we bought. Hey dudes, my sponsor wanted me to check out these new finger picks for guitar. I think they need to be a little smaller. I'll let those Cracker Barrel folks know. 
who's an ignoramus. These here instructions say, if I leave two, then I'm pretty smart. No, Jeb, we're not going to use the launch pads to make a triangle peg game. Actually, guys, we're going to use the launch pads for something else. Okay, okay. The idea is to use the launch pads to load that carry bit marble from the previous place value. For example, the carry bit from the ones place will drop into the twos place launch pad. Then we can press that to kick off the twos place addition circuit. So we'll need to add a taller platform from which the carry bit marble can fall into the twos place launch pad. Then we'll need to add a few Gravitrax action tiles to get the carry bit up to the platform. I'm using a scoop, a jumper, and a magnetic cannon because I found that combination to be fairly reliable for Poindexter. This method is pretty simple, but is not fully automatic. Let's see if it works. Here comes the carry out bit from the ones place, but instead of heading to the landing pad, it's going into a magnetic cannon, and then a jumper, and finally a scoop. The scoop lifts it up, giving the marble just enough momentum after rolling through some curves to fall right into the carry-in slot of the twos place launch pad. We then press that launch pad to kick off the twos place and the process starts all over again. We can use this to tie together as many place values as we have launch pads. Ooh, that's the easy way out. Come on, make it fully automatic. Igor, he's going to bail on the automatic circuit. That's so lame. Maybe he ran out of plutonium. We should send him some plutonium so he can make it fully automatic. The second method to get the carry bit loaded is to use volcanoes instead of launch pads. No, 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 not that volcano. The Gravitrax volcano, the Gravit... <sighs> That's better. Just like the launch pad, the volcano can also hold up to three marbles as inputs. So we can load the volcanoes just like we loaded the launch pads. But the benefit of the volcano is it can automatically launch its marbles when the side button is pressed by an incoming marble. We can use the same auto-loading trick to drop the carry bit marble into the volcano and then launch the volcano with a marble from the timer circuit. Yes, Edward, we're making Poindexter fully automatic from beginning to end. Yay! Woohoo! This is like the World Cup of Marble Computers. Point Dexter! Point Dexter! Point Dexter! This self loading volcano technique was beautifully documented in a must see video titled Gravitrax Volcano Fun by Hank Van Bullion on his Marble Mania channel. So now that we've substituted volcano tiles for launch pads, let's follow the entire lifetime journey of a carry bit marble through Poindexter's final configuration, adder and carry bit circuits. The first switch of an adder circuit separates that second marble and sends it on a shortcut to the right, beating the first marble to the second switch. After it sends the first marble to the vortex of doom, it gets sent along to the next place value as a carry bit. It goes through a series of action tiles to lift it up, a magnetic cannon, then a jumper raises it up to a scoop which dispenses it on a raised platform with just enough momentum to drop the carry bit marble neatly into the open sea slot of the volcano below. This volcano already holds the input bits of the next place value and when the timer circuit triggers that volcano, the carry bit will be added together with the bits from the two numbers being added. It's a nice solution and it's fun to watch. The use of a volcano means we're going to need a third circuit for our marble computer, a timer circuit. Its purpose is to trigger those volcanoes, kicking off each adder circuit one after another. And that's going to expand the size of Poindexter significantly. 
The timer circuit runs independently of the adder and carry bit transfer circuits. The timer circuit consumes time on purpose by making a timer marble go over a long path. It needs to give each adding circuit enough time to complete its calculation, plus enough time for its carry bit to be loaded into the next volcano before triggering the next addition circuit. In Poindexter, I built the timer circuit at the back of the computer on additional raised platforms. I also put a volcano in the once place so that it too can be launched by the timer circuitry. Then the entire calculation can be launched with a single press of a launch pad. No, no, I said a single press of the launch pad. Are you serious? Morse code? The timer circuit ensures the calculation progresses from the ones place all the way to the end, one place value at a time, at the proper time. If, for example, the addition circuit in the eighths place were to start too soon, then the eighths place calculation would not include the carry bit from the fourth place, giving an incorrect result. Since the eighths place doesn't know ahead of time whether it will receive a carry bit from the fourth place or not, it must always wait just in case. So I tried to make the timer circuit last for a long time, but also still be reliable. Balancing these two concerns, the final Poindexter timer circuit design uses two marble cannons. The timer circuit works like this. It starts off with a magnetic cannon that shoots the marble up to the next platform. Then another magnetic cannon buys some time with a reversing track. The marble rolls back down, eventually hitting a slow rail. And then at the end, it enters a splash pad holding two marbles. One of these marbles kicks off the next timer circuit, while the other marble rolls down to start the next adding circuit by setting off the volcano. So that's the three basic parts of the marble computer. The addition circuit, the carry bit transfer, and the timer circuit. So how does Poindexter add to one million without using a million marbles? By encoding the answer in a binary number. Remember, each binary place value doubles in value, and Poindexter is a 19-bit computer. You'll notice that when we get to the 19th bit, we may still get a carry out bit from that 19th place value. Since there is no 20th adding circuit to pass that along to, that final carry bit stays in the 20th place value, which is the 524,288th place. But dude, that's still not one million. Well, the maximum output of Poindexter is when all the output bits are one, meaning we add all the place values together, except the ones place would not be one. The ones place will never have a carry in bit to add, so its maximum output is two, not three, making its sum bit a zero. This means the maximum number that Poindexter can output is one 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 zero, which is one million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy four. Hey, what did the marble say to the elephant? Run! Get it? Marble, run! Get it? Marble, run! Get it? Yeah, the elephant had nothing to do with that joke. Now I'm going to give you build instructions to build your own Marble Edition computer using as much or as little gravity tracks as you have because there's really nothing like experiencing it yourself. <laughs> Been there, done that. Of course, I forgot to get the t-shirt. I have several app codes for you. Just load one of these codes into the free Ravensburger Gravitrax app. Switch to manual mode and the app will give you step-by-step -step build instructions. These codes will allow you to recreate the design using the number of bits you'd like. 
I'm going to go through these quickly, but you can pause the video to get the code you want to build or look in the description below. If you only own one Gravitrack starter set, use this app code to build a simple 1-bit full adder. If you own two Gravitrack starter sets, use this app code to build a simple manual 2-bit adder without a timer circuit, using the launch pads we talked about earlier. If you have two Gravitrack starter sets and a scoop and a volcano, you can build this fully automatic 2-bit adder with a very simple timer circuit. If you want to build an adder much like Poindexter, but with a couple improvements, then use these two app codes. The first is a demonstration 2-bit track that shows the unique features of the first and last bit. The second shows the middle bits. And lastly, the actual Poindexter design itself is captured in these three app codes. One for the first bit, a second for the middle bits, and a third showing the final bit. And if you have a 3D printer, I've posted links in the description so you can print your own binary place value labels and labels for the launch pad inputs. If you haven't seen the previous video where I shared the full story of how it took two months to build Poindexter, click here. To see my other amazing marble runs, click here. To see the entire Gravicalc series of videos, click here.